working and you're working, which is, um, you know, it's so exciting when we launched, we didn't launch Mother Raw until really January of 2019. Okay. That's, you know, when we switched the, the social handle from Raw Foods and had to bring those Raw Foods consumers and engage, engage fans over to Mother Raw. That's when we were formally on, starting to be on shelf. And so when we launched, it was, you know, okay, let's, you know, hope this works. We just spent nine months reinventing the proposition to Mother Raw and all these products. And it was when we had our first two U.S. customers that we were like, yay, we have something here. Yeah. Um, and it seems like a long time ago, but it was only January of 2019. When you thought about rebranding, and so this is for all the entrepreneurs out there who are rebranding or have rebranded, how do you think about branding as a whole, particularly in this situation where a lot of it has to be done remotely, right? And so is it going heavy into socials? Is it going into... PR? Is it partnering with different influencers? What's the strategy that Mother Raw takes in relation to getting the brand and the education out there? Yeah, I think well, to answer the, the second part of your question about sort of what are the, the marketing tools that we, we are focusing on, you know, it's a combination. It really is a combination of all of those things. I wish I had the magic bolt that said it's one over the other. I, I think, you know, absolutely getting super smart with uh, your digital media, your SEO, driving consumers where you need them to, you know, be driven to A-B testing as much as possible. Don't hang your hat on one thing for too long because you want to mm -hmm. always be in experimental mode uh, in terms of, you know, what is pulling harder for you. I, we definitely, we started with a kick but web environment, that was, you know, when we developed sort of our UX design, it was all around the website as a hub and making sure it was designed to do the things that we needed it to do. In our case, we needed it to, to also be an e-com site. So it was making sure at the outset, it wasn't about all the bells and whistles because we're still building, you know, as mm -hmm. we go and as you get bigger, but just making sure that that experience is amazing and that it's taking consumers on the journey you want to be taking them on and that it's fast, you know, speed. Don't, don't have a bad first experience where on mobile it's a, you know, terrible and slow experience, but you know, it was great. It was great on my laptop with crappy mm -hmm. in, in, on your mobile, you'll lose people right away. So do, you know, make sure the things that you do and build are done very well foundationally. And then think about, you know, who, it, it depends on who your consumer is and where you think that they're going to be uh, most likely to become aware and motivated. And in some cases, influencers are super important in that respect. In other cases, they might not be as important. And I, I think there's a sexiness to certain channels like influencers, and they are important in our business, but they're not important enough yet to invest all of our money in that, sure. you know, it, it's, it's, we're a brand that's bought at retail. What do we have to do? We have to taste great. We, as a food product, you have to communicate taste mm -hmm. as unsexy as it might seem. You have to start at the fundamentals is I guess my long winded answer. And from a communication standpoint, if you're a food brand communicating taste in everything you do, the language that you use, we mm. use the language, God, it's craveable. So not just taste great, it's what language are you going to create? And then what visuals, what's your visual style to create that top of the funnel message around taste? Without that, you've lost everything. That's smart. And in terms of product placement, I assume a big piece of this is getting next to maybe like the regular barbecue sauce. Is that, is that a part of it too? So that people have the option of all things compared in the same, in the same row or on the same shelf? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question for yes. It's always easier to start to be distributed in a spot in the store. That's already an embedded behavior for your consumer. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so for us, you know, refrigerated dressing, that's a behavior and it's the growing behavior within salad dressings. The center store mm. is declining. It's 24 feet of all kinds of brands and varieties. The refrigerated set is more manageable and it's growing. So that's where we, you know, we want to be. 
Um, for dips, the same thing. Dips are growing like crazy and they're growing, you know, in the peripheral, in the produce area or the deli area. Um, so that's where we want to be. And um, th so those two things, absolutely placement where the action is happening is where we want to be. One of our challenges is that we, we've developed some condiments. They're fresh, like our current products, and that's trickier. That's going to be trickier when we go to retail. So we're sort of pacing ourselves to grow Mother Raw to be this put good on good brand that mm. stands for something. And starting with dressings and dips primarily for retail, because that'll connect the consumer to the brand more easily. And then, you know, and then we can think about, okay, now when we launch condiments, they're thinking kind of mother raw before they're necessarily thinking shelf stable condiment section, right? right? So mother raw is in the fridge. That's going to be tricky. Um, we know that. But my hope is on, on that from one of my hopes is that, and we see it with one of the retailers in Canada, is that as plant-based protein alternatives continue to grow at such a rapid rate that retailers are creating sets just for those, right? So this is your plant-based mm. protein section. And if we can, with our condiments, be associated there where they're already refrigerated, where those plant-based products are already refrigerated and be part of the overall plant-based um, protein solution, that's like a total win. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh... See you later.